In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use toys from the toy store for inspiration for a research question for your IV physics internal assessment. Lists that say things like, oh, the top 100 ideas to use for a physics IA might seem really good to start and might give you some ideas, but actually they make very poor internal assessments for those people who don't understand where they come from. A much better way is to come up with your own idea using physics you've learned in class. But don't panic. I'm going to show you how to come up with your own idea. Another thing to think about is you don't need to be perfect to get a 7. It is really hard to get a 7 in a physics IA. That being said, you can get a very strong 6 and still get 7s overall because of a good exam result. Another thing I want you to think about is don't fake your personal engagement. Okay, the best IAs are going to come from creating your own investigation like we're going to walk through. And it's not about how you've always dreamt of physics since you were a little kid. It really does sound fake. I've got two quotes on here that come from the subject report from November 2019, written by the head examiner. When a student's report demonstrates independent thinking, initiative, or creativity, where there's interest and curiosity relating to the research question, these are the things that they're looking for, okay? We're not looking for high-level Nobel Prize winning physics. We are looking for good science done well and able to be explained at the level of an IB student. One last thing, personal engagement, it's accessed holistically and not in a certain paragraph. So please don't do it. Don't write a section titled personal engagement. Okay, so here's what I did. I went to the toy store and I got three different toys. The robot kit being a little bit more expensive, the gyro chariot wristband being one of the most inexpensive, and my little plastic track car with a lot of different ideas we can use. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how we can take this different toy, show you how, hey, how does it work? And then how can I expand that and create a research question just from this one little toy? Okay, so let's take a look at this first one. It is a little solar panel that gets attached to a motor and depending on how it gets used, it will cause us to have a little car, a little dog, a little windmill. So let's look at some of these a little closer. Okay, so the first one we're going to look at is this windmill. So you can see that we've got the solar panel connected to the wind turbine, but well, actually the word turbine is a misnomer here because it's actually being powered. So this is not being used as a generator, but as a motor. So this is going to cause the uh, blades to spin. Two very similar ideas would be to mount that propeller um, and or put it on a boat here, just slightly different configurations, whether you want to put it on water or just sitting um, on the table. Two other ideas here. One is a car and the other using the motor to move the different legs on a, they call it, I think, a little dog. So let's think about what we could do here with these ideas and our solar panel. So obviously I put it in the sun and it caused the wheels to spin and turn. So for our research question, I first need to have an independent variable. So what would one thing be that I could change in order to manipulate my result? I think with these ones, one of the easiest ways to think about is perhaps I'm going to somehow change the intensity of the sunlight. I can think of this as a couple of different ways. I could be using this to measure how the intensity of the sun changes over the course of a day, right? It should be strongest at noon and weaker in the morning or evening. 
and maybe I'm going to test my car out multiple times at different times during the day and then try and relate that back to the sun's intensity. I could be using things from topic eight there um, as well as topic two in terms of the movement of the car or the dog. If I want to think more of in terms of how the solar panels are working, again in topic eight, I could perhaps either cover up sections of the solar panel either horizontally here or vertically. Now you can see how they're probably connected in um, in different groups within the picture there. And again, I could then quantitatively, remember we have to do this with numbers. We can't just say light, dark, less, more. We need numbers that go with it for physics. And I could then perhaps somehow change the surface area that's actually being allowed to get light in order to then manipulate my independent variable. The other thing we need is a dependent variable variable. What am I going to measure? With the car, it could be measure how fast it goes. It could be maybe the greatest height. It can go up a ramp. So in other words, it's moving along the floor. It has a certain amount of kinetic energy, goes up a ramp, turning it into potential energy. It doesn't just have to be a race along the ground. Now here's the one I ended up building. It has the motor at the end of a balance beam and if I put it in the sunlight, it's going to now spin in a circle. Now I just quickly put that together and you can see I have some definite issues in terms of reliability that I would have to um, check out before I went any farther. But it does go around in a circle. Now you also see the coins here. What's supposed to happen is those coins are to go in the slot right here as it goes around. So one of the obvious things I could change for an independent variable then would be the number of coins I have in the slot. Now number of is not a very good variable. It's very imprecise and can sometimes be ambiguous, really hard to determine. So I would suggest the mass of the coins would be a better thing than the number of the coins. We could also go around and we could create our own slightly different apparatus here and perhaps we have the plane at a different radius and then you could go to topic B1 and rotational motion and figure out about the amount of torque needed for it to spin around in the circle. There are a lot of different things. I could be measuring its angular speed. I could be measuring its linear speed, the angular frequency. Just from this one little kit, there are a lot of different things that we could take and expand upon. And just from here, I could probably get at least 10 very good research questions just from this one toy in the toy store. Let's go check out some other ones. Okay, so here's a cheap little present for a little kid. It's a wristband with something that pops off. And from the name gyro, you can imagine it's probably is going to spin somehow. So here's what it looks like. There's a little wrist strap and the top part can just click off. And underneath I've got four wheels and I can move it just like a little toy car. It's not spring loaded, but rather due to momentum. So I have to rev it a couple times and then it will take off. Another thing I can do is I could flip it upside down and place it on that white little point and you can see now how it's going to rotate. Now at first you can see it rotating and it does process a little bit but I'm going to show it to you again in its entirety. Now it's going to seem like a long time but something really cool happens around 30 seconds. Listen carefully. The wheels have stopped and it's still spinning. And only now is it starting to process and stop. 
So have you thought of things that you could be changing for your independent variable? Well, how about the number or the distance that's used in order to charge up the actual motor or the spinning of the wheels? You could do it for different lengths and what could you measure? It could be the time it takes for the wheels to stop spinning. It has nothing to do with the gyroscope part, but rather just how long does it take to transfer that potential energy you've stored inside into the kinetic energy of the wheels. It could be using it as a toy car and how far or how long or how fast. It also could then use the gyroscope part. You could do, well, how long after the wheel stops spinning does it take for it to fall over? There's a lot of different things that could come from just something as simple as one little toy like this. But you know what? I still have one last one to show you. Here's my little car that's going to run in a track. Now, what I thought was really interesting was how this track actually interconnects to make one larger track. You can see how it can move back and forth and change the direction. I can even take it apart and change the length of the track. So here's an interesting idea. There's a little car that goes with it inside the track. And instead of making a flat surface, I've actually made a loop. And it's going to drive inside this um, movable track. Can you think about what's going to happen? So as the car moved forward, it actually moved the track with it. So it would move right across the floor. So what kind of things could we change from this? We could change the length of the track, for example. Now, if I got too short, let me just show you what happened. That's right, nothing. I could give it a little nudge and it wasn't able to pull down on the front of the track and actually make it move forward like it did when it was a little bit larger. So that could give me a certain range over which I could change my car. So here it is. I've tried it again and I've got a bigger track. Can you think about what's going to happen? So it was able to move along, but it definitely had a different speed. If you think about it, in this case, it has a lot more track that it actually has to um, push in front of it in order to drive on. So you could change a lot of things in the scenario. You could have had the same car and changed the mass of the car, so perhaps it was going to be able to better pull the track. You could change the length of the track. So those are things that you could have for your independent variable. For the dependent variable, you could do the time it takes to travel a certain distance or its maximum speed. There's a lot of variation there. But there's so many more things we could have done. We could have put the car on a track and made it flat, but I'm going in a circle. Again, back to topic six and all the different things we could change. So hopefully by now you're starting to look at these and say, hmm, what could I change? What could I measure? Here's one last idea. Because that ramp's flexible, I could be putting it on an angle. And now we could be doing banked corners like we do in topic six. We could then go and change the angle of the bank. And there are so many different things we could go and measure. Well, I hope that's helped you. I've taken three different ideas, one with an educational kit to start with, one that was a total toy that you can find, you know, those impulse buys at the checkout, and another toy that you can find from a toy store. Hopefully, I have got you to start to think about the world around you and be able to apply the physics you know from the course. And finally, please, don't just Google, besides the fact that it's plagiarism and there's all sorts of issues with that in academic honesty. You don't need to. Come up with your own idea and let's see it through. Thank you.